Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and today we are doing some craft predictions. But before we do that, consider dropping a like. It will help out the channel. And stay subscribed because we have new predictions each and every week for different categories. But kicking us off today, we have Best Original Song. And you know... This is arguably the hardest category to do this far out, but, 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 with all that being said, I do kind of feel good about my number one. Do I know which Little Mermaid song it's going to be? Probably not, but I do feel like this is probably our front runner. Lin-Manuel Miranda still does not have his Oscar, and he's had two, three chances now, and he keeps coming up short. This year, I'm not really seeing that unbeatable song in his way at this moment. Who knows? Sitting here in May? He looks pretty destined to win this award. Probably going to be Scuttlebutt would be the original song that wins yeah. here. There's two other ones, and who knows if they could submit more than one. Maybe two or three getting, because like in the early 2010s and like in the 2000s, you would see these Disney movies get two, three song nominations. I know they put a rule into how many you could submit, but I'm still pretty sure you could, could submit two. Yeah, with Little Mermaid, there's three songs. I think they can submit two. I do think Scuttlebutt will be one of them, and I think the other will probably be the new Ariel song. I think they'll leave the Prince Eric song out. My number two may make you a little upset. I don't know if you've, you've changed your mind with uh, the music for this movie yet, but I have Wish at number two. I think the song in the trailer sounds very good. I think this movie will get a push regardless of what it is. It's not going to be like Strange World where Disney just doesn't care about it. I think they're going to do everything in their power to make sure this shows up in at least two categories. This song's been floating around. I didn't realize Ariana DeBose had actually performed the song in full at Disney's conference last year, so you can find the main song from Wish floating around on YouTube. I think this will depend on whether it gets radio play and whether kids just won't shut the hell up about this song as they did with We Don't Talk About Bruno. My number three and four, I'm not really sure what order to put these in. I have Wonka and the Color Purple. I would assume they have new songs, but also I don't think there's confirmation of new songs. Maybe there is. Wonka is a full-on musical, and all of the music is brand new. The Color Purple, I think it has been confirmed that there are new songs in the movie. Okay. The question is, are they credit songs, or are they in the movie? I still think a credit song from this movie, if it's a big Best Picture player, can sneak its way into this category. It just can't uh, win. Yeah, exactly. It just can't win. That's why I feel so good about Little Mermaid at this moment. That and Wish really seem like the only angles to win. But who knows? Wonka could have a winning song. And at number five, I do have our beloved Diane Warren getting her secure nomination every year. This time for 80 for Brady, Gonna Be You. And I kind of just want to be able to say 80 for Brady is an Oscar nominee. That, that sounds really fun. After Florence Sun is where I have, I guess, our quote, quote, social justice songs. Usually they're in the conversation. They just don't always get in. I know that in uh, the COVID year, we had two get a nomination, one even win. But since then, we haven't really seen them show up as often. But Rustin, surely they're here. But usually for the song to get in and for the song to win, the movie needs to be a Best Picture nominee. So they are my number seven and eight. I have Barbie at nine. We have heard those original songs here. I just need to hear the song first. And at number 10, I have just something from Across the Spider-Verse. I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but I've heard rumors and rumblings online Metro Boomin is heading the soundtrack. I know he has a cameo in the movie. I don't really see a world where Metro Boomin becomes an Oscar nominee, but I would love to be shocked. In terms of the Barbie song, I don't know if they're joke songs. They're written by Dua Lipa. If the Oscars don't nominate joke songs, they also don't nominate pop songs like we saw with Don't Look Up. I think that's a really good solid 10. It's about as good as you could get right now because again we don't know what's out there but what we do know is out there is the scores so do you want to take us away for the best original score competition right now? I will do and at number one I have Killers of the Flower Moon. Do I feel great about this? No but I feel like Killers is not going to go home empty handed like Irishman does. I think it's going to win supporting actress and maybe that's its only win but I could see Robbie Robertson finally get a win in this category here for Killers. It just feels right at the moment because I don't believe Dune's repeating. Oppenheimer sounds great, but I don't know if it has enough to win. I mean, there's John Williams for Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny, but is he going to win for an indie movie for his final win? I love indie cinema, meaning Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes. Other things I have here, my top five are Oppenheimer. We just heard it in the trailer. It sounds pretty good. 
I know he missed for Tenet, he missed for Black Panther last year, but you know, he, he missed twice in a row. It might be time to get him back in, and this time for a Best Picture nominee. In my eyes, Past Lives is here at number three. Uh, we'll get to lay eyes on this movie and get to hear the score very soon. John Williams is at number four for Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. I think he's pretty safe for a nomination. And I do have Dune Part 2 landing in here for score. I know you have a case for why it won't get in, but at the moment, I'm not seeing anything else really worth putting into my top five. So I had Dune here where I could easily see it missing due to like what you were saying in previous episodes. I'll stand by that. I won't repeat my argument. Go find it in another video. You can find it anywhere. It's the same score. <laughs> Outside of my top five, I have The Killer. Maybe Reznor and Ross can find their way back in. At the moment, I'm holding out. I want to I want to hear what the score is first. Normally, they have a pretty good track record for David Fincher movies. Wonka's at number seven. Uh, they had new songs. Probably have a new score. At eight is Asteroid City. Despla has a history getting in for Wes Anderson movies, but we also know that Despla has missed like three or four years in a row. May, December, Barbie, they run out my top ten. There's some other big movies out there, just... um. I'm not really sure where to go. It's also worth mentioning The Zone of Interest, which is being scored by Mika Levy. Mika Levy was previously an Oscar nominee for Jackie uh, and was in contention for Under the Skin, the last Jonathan Glazer movie that she did. The Zone of Interest is very much worth, especially if we're both taking it seriously as a Best Picture contender, it is a big deal in score and could be in win contention, I believe. Also worth mentioning Wish and Elemental, both Disney movies. We saw Encanto get in a few years ago for its score and Wish could very much do the same, especially if it has a really good soundtrack that people don't know how to reward because there's so many good songs and they can only pick one. And then of course Elemental, the Pixar movie, Thomas Newman is doing the score for this one. Maybe this won't be the strongest Pixar movie, but it's still worth taking seriously because it is Pixar and we know their music usually goes pretty damn hard. Zone of Interest is something I probably should have in my top 10 but I mean Kansas so soon so if it opens there and people rave about the score then yeah move it on up I'll, I'll just hold off for another what is it like two weeks until eyes are laid on this movie but let's move on to the next category here which is best costume design i'm going to be taking this one first off number one we got barbie doesn't matter how unconfident i am in barbie and other categories costume design is unshakable here this is prime costume design material after that we got dune part two we've seen the costumes it's big it looks like they're doing more than the first one i mean on iraq it looks mostly the same, but we're not just seeing Arrakis. We are going to other planets, which names I forget, cannot remember. Emperor Planet, Florence Pugh, looks like costumes, yes. And then number three, the color purple. I could see an angle where this ends up missing, if it might not be the biggest player of the year, but I do really have high hopes for the color purple being a massive, massive player, which is why I've got it so strong here. Number four, I have Killers of the Flower Moon. I think everything we've seen here, the costume design is really strong. I mean, God damn it, the Irishman got in for costume design, and it was just dudes wearing suits. There's clearly more going on here, especially with some of the traditional indigenous clothing that they're using on this film. And at number five, I'm putting Poor Things back in, baby. Poor Things costume design looks stunning, as does the production design, as does the cinematography. I think if nothing else, this film will be a visual feast. Even if people really hate this movie, if it's really polarizing like Babylon was, it can still make it into costume design, it can still make it into production design, just based on how gorgeous the colors are. You have a very, a very fun and very interesting top five. I am still gonna hold out for poor things a little bit. I know I was originally very high on it. The release date does scare me. I wanna see some more faith put behind Searchlights and be like, hey, this is going to be our push this season. But I think if it is its push, costumes, they're, they're very secure. Production design is very secure. You know what I think it, it makes absolutely certain for Searchlight? Chevalier ain't doing shit <laughs> yes i do agree barbie is the front runner i don't really see an angle for this movie not to win at the moment but you know those are always our famous last words here in may i'm starting to think barbie is a one nomination one win movie interesting wow i could see an angle for maybe one other category yeah but it's not one nomination one win i think it's two nominations one win I i'll fight back on that one nomination in our next category, but I'll save it for then. After my top five, I also have the zone of interest at number six. Maybe it won't have enough costumes or whatever for it. I think production design looks good for that one, but maybe not costumes. Asteroid City, we know Wes Anderson's costumes are gonna go 
off. We've seen them in the trailer. They look great. Uh, Wonka also belongs here, as well as The Little Mermaid and Napoleon rounding out my 10. Asteroid City, like you keep mentioning, we should put it in our 10, but is it really going to be nominated? No. Wonka has a shot. Little Mermaid, maybe. And Napoleon, I would love to see it, but there's one in your honorable mentions I think could maybe be a sleeper player, and that's Firebrand. I don't know how much that could be a solo nominee, as we saw last year of Corsage. Like, hey, really good, but still couldn't get its way in, and I think that Firebrand could maybe follow a similar path as Corsage, where it's an actress and a costumes player, and ends up falling short in both. We'll see how some of these things play in the reviews very, very soon. I think there's an angle for Priscilla. I just... I will harp on this every episode until it comes out. The fact that we had Elvis last year, I don't really see the angle for Priscilla to do it the year after, especially with how much Elvis dropped at the last moment. And I don't feel yeah. like they're going to rush. I'd be like, okay, let's not make the same stuff again, just, you know, from a slightly different angle. It's sort of a Bohemian Rhapsody Rocket Man play, right? Yeah. Where Rocket Man underperforms because Bohemian Rhapsody just did so well. Production design. At number one and number two. I'm not sure which order to put these, but I have Dune Part 2 because it looks like it's elevating from the initial Dune. It's adding bigger pieces, bigger sets. Everything that we're going to see on Austin Butler's planet looks grand. It looks big. We're going to get more visuals on Arrakis. So that's my number one. This is in a category where I think Dune can hold on to its win from the first one. And I do think Barbie will get in here for production design. I feel like this will be something people rave about because it's bringing your toy sets from when you're a child to life. Barbie is just a little bit outside of my top five, but I can totally see it get in. I do have it as one nomination, one win, but if it gets into one other category other than costume design, it would be production design. Warner Brothers, they're dominating these categories because at number three, <laughs> Color Purple. Warner Brothers has one, two, and three. I don't feel like Color Purple has an angle to win, but I feel like it's, it's pretty safe in here for production design. I feel like it could have a lot of cool sets adapting stuff from the stage, and they could go really big with it, or they could go very minimal, and I feel like both angles that you go with could spark a very good like narrative for a nomination here at number four i have indiana jones in the dial of destiny i feel like this could present a lot of interesting sets pieces they're going to go throughout time so you're going to get to get to see some old sets to spark a little bit like hey you're recreating something that we know from the past and i know that the last one did not get in for production design but the last one was a pretty critically pan movie and also was not very loved by its target audience but i don't see that being the same case here for dial of destiny and the aforementioned oppenheimer rounds out my top five this and killers of the flower moon i think one of them will miss i'm not sure which one will right now i have killers out just because killers can't get everything but also oppenheimer can't get everything so i feel like one of these if not both of these ends up missing i think i only have two of five of the same as you right now i only have dune and color purple for indiana jones i think that they might just feel they've seen this type of production design done so many times especially because it's become basically like every single adventure movie just does indiana jones now like if you're gonna give indiana jones production design when uncharted copied it last year like it feels like at this point it's copying itself oppenheimer first man got in it looks like it's playing that sort of same angle with the laboratories and the testing sites but at the same time i definitely feel a little bit less strong about oppenheimer than you do so i have oppenheimer missing in place of the three movies that are not in your top five i do have killers i have poor things and i have zone of interest which i think you're about to talk about Yep, those are my next three in line. Killers and Oppenheimer, I feel like are kind of going in for the same sort of angle of setting in a desert. Like I said before, they're both very big, grand on scale, and if they're kind of the same, they're probably not putting both in. I'm just not sure which one to focus on at the moment. Poor things, I mean, that teaser makes me feel a little bit better, just like we talked about over in costumes. The release date still scares me a little bit. Zone of interest makes sense but I need to make sure it's a for real picture player. And if it is a for real picture player, this comes along with it. But if it's not really a top five player, it's more of just like, hey, this is our international nominee that gets screenplay and director, then this probably wouldn't come along. Other yeah. little ones I wanna mention real quick are Napoleon, Wonka, and Asteroid City. There's an angle, but I don't see that angle happening. The argument for zone of interest here is actually really compelling in my mind, which is that apparently they went to the town outside of Auschwitz, and they redesigned the town to look apparently exactly historically accurate to the way that it did, and apparently there were locals that were having, like, very, very strong flashbacks because it just felt 
as though the entire town had been transported back. Honestly, I think that there's an argument even if the film underperforms, if it does not make it into the places that we think it could make it into. Production design, I think, is one of the strongest because of the work that they did to recapture a very historically accurate depiction of Auschwitz and the town around it. Asteroid City, though, I, I think that you should give a little bit more credit than it's getting currently. The French Dispatch almost made it into production design. Like, it was so, so close. I was definitely predicting it on that morning. It was number six. If Asteroid City gets one nomination, it's here. I'm not gonna dump on Dune's Oscar chances in best makeup and hair, because I think Dune is going to win yes. this category. There you go. I think that the transformation that they've done on all of the Harkonnens in this, I think it's finally going to pay off for them. It got them a nomination on the first film. We are going to see so much more of the Harkonnens on this film. We got Austin Butler looking like a certified lunatic. Dune Part 2 is going to win Best Hair and Makeup. I will say that right now. I will probably back down on it later after more information is presented. But right now, Dune is looking incredible incredibly strong in best makeup and hair. I'm glad that the trailer, you know, backed me up here because I remember I said this our first go around of like, hey, Dune Part 2, this is the category where it can win, but the first one didn't because we are going to see more Harkonnen. And on top of the Harkonnen, I mean, mm -hmm. Lady Jessica has tattoos all over herself. That's makeup. Paul is in the desert, so there's going to be dust, dirt everywhere. They're going to be dirty. More makeup. I just think that Dune is not going to go home with just one win after getting six last time so i feel like it has to pick up some small wins here and there and i think hair and makeup is definitely a category where it can win something that it didn't win last time after dune part two i do have maestro following it up at number two in hair and makeup i think bradley cooper is just going to be done up enough that it's going to happen as much as i have no confidence in the movie i think it will get into best makeup and hair the way that house of gucci did the makeup and hair branch don't give a shit about whether your movie's good or not. They just care if the makeup is good. And Bingo. it sure does look good in Maestro from the photos we've seen so far. At number three, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, baby. This one is stunning makeup. It should stay in conversation for the entire year. We know it'll definitely be shortlisted. And if it's shortlisted, it is almost certain to be nominated. The work that they did with the High Evolutionary's face, all of the people on Counter-Earth, all of the animal creatures, that's makeup. That's not CGI. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 got in based on Gamora and Nebula, and now they've added in all of the Counter-Earthians, they've added in the High Evolutionary. This just feels, I'm not going to say locked, but it, it feels yeah, whatever I, I, that is. Yeah, I think it's definitely like 95% in there. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 did not make the cut, but I feel so strongly about Volume 3, especially if Black Panther Wakanda Forever got nominated last year. We know this branch is receptive to Marvel stuff, and this is, I think, the best makeup work that has ever been done in a Marvel movie. So, and poor things, in that trailer, there are two major takeaways I had. It was production design looks stunning, and the makeup work is nuts. Willem Dafoe's face is a canvas for any makeup designer. The few shots that we got of him, uh, the shots that we got of Mark Ruffalo, hey, even, even Emma Stone, her performance and her makeup is making her look like a child in this movie, and that is the vibe that you need off of that, so I'm feeling pretty strong there. So my top four, I feel really good about. Number five is where I start to feel pretty shaky. And I've got the zone of interest right now. I don't really have an argument for or against it. I'm just feeling like it might have something in it that feels strong to be a contender, or maybe not. I don't know. I'm feeling very shaky on number five. I, I'm with this category as well. After Guardians, I feel very strong with your top three. I think even with the poor release date for poor things, makeup probably in there. And just, I'm with you here. I don't really know what to put at five. Parts of me wants to put Barbie, but then I feel like I'm over nominating Barbie. Killers is here as a default. Like, hey, it's just going to get a lot of nominations, but also the Academy showing it's not really doing that anymore, where it's throwing these massive movies, massive totals, and Color Purple is a contender. Some of the other things that I'd give a shout out to, I mean, Barbie will have really good hair, but I don't see, I, th this branch doesn't give a shit about hair, and we've seen that over and over and over. If you're not doing stuff with the makeup, with the face, it doesn't matter. And Barbie, I think it's just, it's glamour makeup. There, It doesn't give them something that's like creatively fulfilling, I guess. I think the other one that I 
feel has maybe the best chance of making it into the top five is Napoleon because we know that they're going to do a lot with Joaquin Phoenix's face. But at the same time, uh, Napoleon doesn't feel like a contender, so I don't know about that. Otherwise, The Little Mermaid is worth mentioning here. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is definitely worth mentioning. But for everyone out there, make sure to drop down some of your, you know, bold craft predictions. We said ours here, but, you know, we would love to hear, because maybe it changes some of our predictions. And drop a like if you made it this far. It helps out the channel. Stay subscribed because next week we are doing animation international feature and documentary predictions so more tough categories when we are this far out but until next time my name is dill and my name is matt and this is fantasy film ball